This is a panel for a chair that I'm making. It's all carved on the front. And now I'm cutting the bevels on the edges to fit in the frame of the chair. So the beveling happens in two stages. I'll do the long bevels with the axe and then take them in the shop and plane them. And then and then come back and hew the shorter bevels, the, the bevels on the end grain. So it has to stand up on the block. The block is often hollow in the middle. You want to make sure that it's, there's support under here, that you don't have that hollow when you're hewing. So I'm sort of out near the rim of the, Lock and taking these cuts and those break up those fibers like that and then you knock them off So I'm going to come up about that high, and it happens in a few passes. So, that, a little more of that. around so you can see it from that angle. Now I've flipped it end for end. And it's easier for me to see it now. There's the broken fibers. So to get those, the piece is tilted away, the hatchet is coming straight down, or if the piece is vertical, the hatchet comes in at an angle. Now, the, the block of wood comes up straighter like that, and the hatchet just falls down, breaking those off. I'll do it again so you see it. That's about as high as I want to go. And the hatchet is a single bevel. There's no bevel on the back. And that's, I don't know, six and a half inches, seven inches, something like that. You can do it with a double bevel hatchet too. You have to be very cognizant of the fibers in the panel. If the wood is uh, twisted or has some waviness to it, you have to be careful. Here, I'm pretty close. Uh, I can hear that some more. This is a very straight grain piece of oak. So more agreeable, more predictable than something with some curved fibers in it.
hand's a little slippery there. I've got my thumb now up behind the hand, the, near the head of the hatchet. Get a little more accurate. Try to get that last bit there. And that's close enough now, I'll plane the rest of those and then come back to bevel that part afterwards. Here's this panel that I'm working up for this wainscot chair. So I'll just show you the next step in, in these bevels to make the panel fit in the mortise and tenon framework. I've chopped that bevel with an axe and you can see the edge of it is inconsistent and that wants to come down really to a feather edge and not a steep bevel but a long sloping one here. So you can take it so far with the axe and you can finish it with the axe but should slow way down and uh, at a certain point it's more efficient to switch over to a couple of planes and to plane it, I want it up off the bench a little bit. So I've got this, just this uh, strip of, uh, this case, white pine with a thin strip of oak glued across it to act as a stop like that. And that's all shoved up against the bench hook. And now uh, just hold that in place with the hold fast. And I'll start off with the four plane or scrub plane like that, the curved iron a little bit. And have to be careful you really want that supported here this is lifted up a little bit and as I push down to plane I run the risk of splitting that which would be a very sad experience that I don't want to have and you see me there, um, getting a little warmer now, skewing that plane a little bit like that. And that's true, I do that in almost every planing application. Off the top of my head, I can't think of when I wouldn't do that. You might wonder, half an inch of this is going to go in the frame of the chair. And you might wonder why I'm planing way over to here. But that's to get a long sloping bevel, not a steep one. And I'm a little bit thick at this bottom end of the panel and a little thin right there. So now I'm going to switch to a smooth plane. And being aware that I don't really want to hit beyond here. Here's an offcut of some of the rail stock for this chair I'm making. And it has the groove in it. Uh, so I can use that as a test. And um, as I suspected, down at this end, too thick still, it won't snug over there. Here, I'm fine. 
a little bit snug again right up there and fine again there so it gets a little tight right here fine a little tight perfect so whoops done If you don't have an offcut of that when you're when you're plowing those grooves, it's worth cutting an extra bit to have that to test these panels. Then flip around and do the other side, the other edge. This one I could have maybe done a little more hatchet work. So I'm sort of leaned over looking at my progress there. Thick right there. You can use a uh, spoke shave to get some of that localized cutting if you need to. That's almost there, right off the scrub plane. Right here at the back end. Oops. Looks like it'll go. So, the next step is to go out and hew that bit right across there, going that way, right across there at both ends, and then bring it back indoors and plane across it. I got a couple different axes to look at. Uh, this one's the same general style as the previous one. It's a single bevel, broad cutting edge. The main difference is here the, um, the eye is canted so the handle kicks up that way. And that saves your knuckles when you're in on a wide piece. So when I have really wide stuff to hew, I use this hatchet. And um, I'm going to be hewing about maybe three quarters of the width of that panel. And again, now it's very important that that be supported on solid wood. Look at how much that, uh, that hollow is under there. Uh, if I were to start striking that, you run the risk of cracking. It really needs to be supported. So it, the panel stands up straighter now than it did before and I'm um, coming in with the hatchet at an angle to make those scoring cuts and now so those were tilted this way now that that hatchet is coming more snug to the panel rather than like that to score it it's more like this now to break them off.
and you can see the progress so I need to take a little more of that down. And that's probably close enough. It gets a little fragile, so better to be cautious and take more with the plane in this um, in this section. So I'll do that one last end. And for that, uh, just to show you another hatchet, this is a double bevel hatchet. It's a spoon carving hatchet. And uh, but you don't have to feel like you have to go out and get a big single bevel hatchet. You can do it with this one. This one is um, by Zvante Darba, a Swedish blacksmith. Uh, and I hope I'm pronouncing his name close to correctly. So same kind of steps. It's mostly just different angles uh, with, the, with the hatchet coming at the wood. And you, with a narrower blade, have to do a sort of piecemeal. But if a double bevel hatchet is what you've got, it will still hew wood to get these bevels. more to come off of there. Now I'll be planing a cross grain and um, so a little more extra caution. At this stage this little uh, wooden support is more vital than ever because now that edge that I planed before is so fragile that it's supported there uh, rather than shoving it against the bench hook itself. Um, so I start way back here. I'm, st I'm doing the edge last. Skewing the plane is uh, even more important now because we're going across the across the wood. If I were to go straight on, it might dig it up more, and at an angle you can't see it, but it leaves a smoother cut that way. So now. By starting this bevel, I'm getting sort of a, a ridge right here where these two bevels are almost mitering themselves. And then similarly here. So I'll start looking at that thickness now and with paying particular attention to that ridge area where the two bevels sort of intersect. It's really easy to leave that too thick and then the panel won't slide in the frame.
switching over there to the smooth plane maybe a tad too soon. Let's see. It's, it's still thick. So it's really this area behind the edge that I'm after, not right at the edge, because it can go on there, but it's that area right in there. And I'll show you what a spoke shave can do for the same place. You can be a little more accurate with that. I'd still skew it a lot. Snug. We'll see what happens. And I'll flip it around and do the last one. And then we'll test fit it in the frame. snug right there and worth addressing a little bit better I'll call that Ready to try, I guess. All right, let's see. I don't know how well this will show up, but I did a test fit and I couldn't close the other style on here. And that told me something is wrong. And is it the width or is it the height? The height can throw off being able to close up the width, which seems, uh, sometimes a little hard to follow, but um, I generally allow for half an inch of the panel in the, in the frame. And so that, um, that groove is half an inch deep, a little bit deeper sometimes. And so once I saw that the frame wasn't closing up, I took it apart and got just one corner pinned in and drove the panel into that. And here in the back, you can see it's not quite all the way down to the bottom of the panel groove, but it's close. Now the thing is, at this stage, the panel is very fragile. So any, any knocking about you want to do, you have to be really careful. Uh, and right here I have a line that is the bottom of that rail and the panel is five-eighths of an inch above that line. 
So I can knock this rail out and carefully remove the panel and I'll just trim a little off of each end grain for both ends and try to thin those bevels out a little more so this will close up. Uh, as I said, the main thing at this stage is the panel is really, you don't want to bang those edges at all. That's why I, I want to get it in the frame and leave it there as I build the rest of the chair uh, just to protect those edges. So trimming that end grain, uh, clearly I'm not going to use a, a saw. So I just use this uh, same support block and use it like a shooting board. And I'm stopping before I come to the end. And then just taking that last bit very carefully. And flip it over here. Because it's so thin, it doesn't take but a few strokes to change that height. I now have well under 16 and a half, and I was aiming for 16 and a half altogether. So now see that changed the way it fits in the grooves. Usually it does. So it's more snug now. And same over here. Not so bad there. But I will try to clean a little of that off there. A little more. And grab that. Try a little sharper spoke shave. Now, doesn't want to cut either way, really. Sharpen both of those spoke shapes the same day. That's better, right there. exceptionally wide. It's a riven piece of oak that I trimmed down to 14 inches. So it's a really not the kind of oak I come across all the time. And just as straight as can be. Really perfect. I saved it for quite a few years for this chair. Four years or more. See, when it's thick like that, that keeps it from coming all the way down into the um, groove. And that's the scrub plane. Try to hollow it a little back there. Well, let's see what happens. I might as well just keep going with this sub-assembly that I have. So the one style and the bottom, well, the, not the bottom most, but lower rear rail. And you can slip that um, 
rail on there and knock on that. And that has to come, well, that's down where it needs to be. That just needs to go in its mortise. <laughs> Easily said. Just have to get it started. The tenon isn't that tight. That's because of the panel. And the other style. See if this will close up. So there, it's closing at the top, not at the bottom yet. That's real close, still a bit of a gap there, and I think what I'd end up doing is trying to put a clamp across it. Let me grab one, see. Not a traditional solution, but uh, one that doesn't abuse the wood quite so much. And once it closes up, it can come off. So there it is. And this will come apart, of course. There's a lot more joinery to cut on these pieces. These blank spots are where the arms come in to the back. And I haven't cut anything for the side rails below the seat. I just wanted to get the panel framed in the um, in the chair frame in the styles and rails. So that's the beginnings of one of those wainscot chairs.